sure if you can score on the court. <laughs> Jalen and Jay Will are here with us now. Jalen, I want to start with you. Katie, Kyrie, and James Harden. How does this work on a court? This is about to be a new era version of what we saw when LeBron James joined Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami. I'm not saying they're going to win the championship this season because that big three didn't win it in its first season as well. But I'm interested to see if they're going to be able to win a couple. And it's exactly what the East Coast needed, a villain. You got KD who left the Splash Brothers after winning back-to-back -back finals MVPs and hurting his Achilles. Kyrie Irving left the opportunity to play with LeBron James and the Boston Celtics. James Harden basically told the Rockets, trade me or else. And so these three guys on the same team at the same time, elite playmakers, terrific in isolation, awesome score. James Harden will be the guy to make the sacrifice because he's a terrific playmaker. And Jay Will, he's the one that hasn't won a ring just yet. Well, you mentioned it. Exactly. Those are three of exactly. the top five ISO players too. Go ahead, Jay. I was going to say exactly, Jay Rose, after being down 3-1 to one to the Golden State Warriors, he had it in his clinches. And I'll say this, there's an element of them that remind me a little bit of your squad, Jay Rose, back in the day. Not from a physicality perspective, but there's a little bit of that Detroit Pistons swagger, right? Like, we, we are the new bad boys of the 21st century, and we're going to do it our way whether you like it or not. And here's how they actually do it on the court, Maria. You move Kyrie Irving off the ball. You give the ball to James Harden. You play fast. Look, if KD gets a rebound, if Kyrie gets a rebound or James, you push it up. You play really fast. But if you do get into a half-court scenario, I like the ball in James Harden's hands considering he averaged 10 assists, especially this year with the Houston Rockets. And think about this from a coaching perspective. You put a blend. Steve Nash did some work with the Golden State Warriors. He understands that continuity system in which they had with Steve Kerr. Now you also have Mike D'Antoni on the same bench that understands James Harden and also Great understands... Point floor spacing, all these guys are multi-dimensional threats. It's going to work offensively. And if nothing else, they're going to win games, what, like 130 to 140 or something like that. We know they're going to be able to score the ball. But the real question is, too, it's not only on the court, it's how these guys function off the court, Jalen. If you had to suggest who the leader of this big three would be, who would you go with? Oh, KD the leader, no doubt about it. When he went to Golden State, he didn't want to embrace those responsibilities. He's the leader because you know what, Maria? The last couple of weeks with Sean Marks, Steve Nash, Mike D'Antoni was trying to call Kyrie and he was sending him the voicemail. He was answering when he talked to KD. They was like, where's your man? And when it was time to bring in James Harden, they was like, KD, what do you think? Because he's a guy along with the others that has a chance to leave after this season or so. So KD now, I think, is going to be comfortable being there. He's going to be comfortable being the leader. Now on the East Coast, man, anchoring what we've seen on the West with LeBron being the king, and we know about Kawhi and PG. But how about the Splash Brothers when Klay Thompson comes back? This is going to be... Welcoming back in Woj, Jalen and Jay Will. And Woj, when you think about these two... James Harden expected to meet with reporters today, the day after his trade to Brooklyn becomes official, where he will team up with Kevin Durant and maybe Kyrie Irving. Nets general manager Sean Marks yesterday was asked about how Irving's absence impacted the decision to make the trade. Here's what he said. They're completely separate from, from one another. Um, you know, Kyrie's absence and, you know, the personal issues that he's dealing with it has, has nothing to do with us, you know, going after and uh, attaining James Harden in this. Regarding Kyrie, when he'll be hopefully back and rejoining the team, you know, part of that is going to be up for the NBA and, and we're waiting for them to come out with, so they're ruling on the health and safety protocols. You know, I have talked to Kyrie, so um, I know he's excited about getting back on the court um, with his teammates, you know, as soon as possible. Boy, is there a lot to unpack in the things that he just said and the perfect man to do it. The one and only Jalen Rose is here to give the people what they want. All right, let's go through those in order. The first thing he said was that the, the Kyrie Irving absence had no impact on their decision to trade for James Harden. Do you buy that? I buy it, Greeny, because this was something that's been brewing, in particular this offseason when those three were in Los Angeles playing pickup games together. And here's the deal. They did a terrific job of formulating a big three 
in Brooklyn with the Nets. And there, when you're trying to make that omelet, it's going to be some broken eggs. And unfortunately for the Rockets and their fans, it was them. Because Kyrie and KD were already with the squad. So James was the one that had to go to his team and say that he wanted out. A guy that's been an MVP, won multiple scoring titles. They'll likely retire his number one day. So he had to make it unceremonious for his situation so that he can now make it happen. But now that it's happened, this is going to be outstanding for the NBA because we have a built-in villain, as the people like to call it. KD left the Splash Brothers and their beloved. Kyrie left LeBron, and he's the king. And I just said what happened with James Harden. Now you have LeBron, the king on the west, sitting on the throne, and now you have the Nets and KD, a two-time finals MVP on the East Coast. We needed this for I'm Eastern Standard Time. I, I'm with you on that part of it, but obviously one of the big three is not there. Another thing Sean Marks just <laughs> said is, I've talked to Kyrie and he's excited to be back on the floor with his teammates. Well, what exactly should we make of that considering, in, at least in one big way, he's the reason he's not on the floor with his teammates? So, of course, we always got to take, you know, mental health and or any anxiety or depression into account when we're talking about any human being. But beyond that, he has a personal and a professional responsibility to his team and to his teammates to show up for work, Greeny. And when he doesn't show up for work, don't donate $400,000 back to the team. If you really want to make some moves in the community with that money, take that game check and actually do that. And he's been a, a terrific ambassador in so many facets of giving back to his community, Greeny. And it's not talked about enough. But I understand not to confuse Kyrie walking around the floor burning sage on the right wing because I still have images of him at Golden State hitting a big shot over Steph Curry winning a championship on the mm -hmm. right wing. I know that Kevin Durant is coming back from an Achilles injury, but when he won his two championships, that was against LeBron James. James Harden, along with the Greek freak and Dame, Dame Lillard are probably the three best players that haven't won championships in today's game. So now if you KD, you come to the West. You saw LeBron win a championship in the East. I mean, if you KD, you go to the East because you saw, saw LeBron do it. You saw Kawhi do it. And now KD's in the East. And when the Splash Brothers get back and LeBron has AD, this is going to be fantastic theater for the NBA. Yes, Kyrie will find a way to return to the team. Trust me, when, when his protocol ends, Greeny, he want to be a part of this show because that's what it's going to be. Right, let's make it clear, because now he may have violated the NBA's COVID protocol, and we'll see what the league decides to do. When you just touched on it, he, he gets paid a little over $408,000 per game. So the five games that he's missed, in theory, would be $2 million worth of salary. Now, we don't believe he's being docked that in any meaningful way, but, but how about that part of it? How about the league's place in this and the COVID piece of this? That's enough viscous for the projects, boy. $2 million, I tell you, man. But here's the thing, Greeny. During the season, there are going to be ebbs and flows with players. But ultimately, this is what's going to happen. He's going to pay his fine. He's going to clear COVID protocols. James Harden is going to have a press conference today. He's going to play basketball with the Nets possibly Saturday if everybody clear their physicals. At some point next week, probably, Kyrie Irving is going to return to this team. Mm. And they're going to have a spectacular big three, unlike the one, pro probably the last time we've seen this was when LeBron joined up with Wade and Chris Bosh. Two of these guys have already won championships. Harden has already won an MVP. This is going to be great theater. And I'm going to just tell you this. I'm yeah. still not picking them to win it all this year. I'm picking the Milwaukee Bucks to still come out of the East. So while I'm giving them all of this praise, this ain't going to be the year for them to win the East. The back-to-back -back reigning MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, just got Drew Holiday, along with Middleton. People still sleeping on Chris Middleton? Did y'all see him ball in the playoffs last year when the Greek freak wasn't available? That continuity is going to mean something in an abbreviated season. The Bucks will eliminate the Nets if they play them in the playoffs. You and I had a super